what topic we're talking about, and so we want to get rid of them. Um, this is done usually by using an off-the-shelf list, but in general, if you have a specific uh, some information about the subject matter that you're analyzing, you probably want to use a specialized topic model, I mean, um, specialized stop word list. And so these are, the document term, is it just like binary? Is, like, is it there or not, or the count? It's a count, yeah. Okay. Um, that's right. But we, yes, we also want to remove all of the rare words because we actually can't learn very much from words that don't appear enough for us to learn anything about what uh, they are about. Mm. And also this makes it a lot more tractable. Um, the document term matrix becomes huge if you have every single word that appears even once, and so we're going to want to prune it at the beginning step when we're actually making it. Uh, along those lines, we want to do something called stemming. Now, stemming is the process of chopping off the ends of words so that um, you know, table and tables is represented as the same token. Uh, as opposed to two different tokens, we don't really think that there's any information being conveyed about the topic based on whether or not table or tables is plural. Um, but there are risks involved with stemming as well. Sometimes you might accidentally remove some ends of a word that you're actually interested in. We are going to use an application in Spanish um, today, actually, and see a case in which stemming is, makes it a lot harder to interpret what's actually going on because you know, a lot of the words end in a vowel, and you chop them off, and it's hard to interpret. Um, so there are trade-offs here as well. And finally, you, well, not finally. <laughs> There's still more to do. You have to choose the number of topics. And this is a hugely important uh, step, and it's not obvious how you're supposed to choose the number of topics. Uh, we're going to follow a basic guideline and then go to a more advanced method. Do you have a question? Is there any, I don't, so is there any efficient, so I guess the, the because in this process it's very important, this, the number of topics, so is there any way, like a priori, that ha helps us to, to find a, uh, a K at least very close to, a, 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 to the optimal number? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, yes, it, it, first of all, it's not even really clear what the optimal what optimal means in this context, where I'm going to talk about different criteria for evaluating what K you want to use. And there are both simple and complicated methods for choosing K. Um, but yes, this is an important topic. You said that LDA is uh, essentially the co-location. Like the topics are literally just words that are show up in the same place. In the same document. In the same document. Exactly. So that's what yeah. co-location means. Right. Is, that, is, there, okay. is there a way to like, I mean, maybe you just partition the document if you know that like one section is a preamble and another section is like regulations. Sure. You just I, create those into two separate. Okay. I, th I think that would make sense, yeah. But if you have multiple documents, let's say, it makes this harder because yeah. imagine like two different documents, they talk about different, two totally different things, then probably you might want to create more, a larger number for the topics. Do you think? Maybe. Or you have two very similar documents, then maybe the, you know, the common top, they, they share a lot of topics, so the number of topics, the, the K, could be I'm not, smaller. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll talk about choosing K. I mean, there, there, there's a lot going on here, so, and yeah. For the rare words, there are also uh, up to one number, I mean. Yeah, I, I, I there's really a lot of uh, it would on the playing around. That's right, <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of art in this. Science. There's, a, yes, indeed. Um, and, well, that's what's... Uh, so exciting and troubling about it is that there's lots of work to be done on this, but also you can do it wrong. But I think with, this, with, with these things, it's hard to do it that wrong. So, and also, if you are worried about it, just don't do any of it. Um, basically, these are computational efficiency things. Um, and so if you're really concerned, just, just don't. Just do as little as possible. So another question. So typically, so when we do a robustness check, uh, so do we have to like show like, okay, these are the different versions of results. Right. Given so in the, this, this, this is the sort of thing we're going to talk about. There is little of that now. Um, people just take the results of LDA and, and, and show it as if this were deterministic. It's absolutely not. And uh, it's really, really not. It's actually quite fragile in some contexts. And so we're going to talk about a way to do it that makes it more stable and more robust. Uh, finally, we have to choose alpha. And for now, uh, we're going to use a simple rule which is just that alpha is 50 over k. So there's a paper about this from 2004. 
and uh, everyone uses it. But we also are going to talk about what happens if you optimize alpha. But that's still, so the, okay. The difficulty, though, is still kicking the can down the road a little bit. You're still left with, like, a decision to be made on K. Well, yeah, K, yeah, K, you, you choose K, and then you're, you're all good. But so let's, uh, let's actually look at what happens when we, uh, when we implement this. So if y'all want to follow along, you're welcome to. Otherwise, I'll just run it um, on the screen. So all of the code, data, all that stuff for this is on my GitHub under Topic Models. So let me just download it. My desktop. Old Launch Studio. Oh, that's the wrong one. I just need to find the folder I just put on my desktop. How do I look up a desktop? Desktop. Desktop, yes. Uh, usually what I do Can is I set, set up the, yeah. Set up yeah, the, uh, good the, the working directory. There we are. Open somewhere. There we are. Okay. Lovely. I oh, should get these paths right. Yep. I don't like using a Mac. Uh, uh. No, no, no. Oh, oh. So the code we're going to be using today is actually code that I've used in my research. It is the collection of uh, lots of tweets that are sent by Venezuelan elites during the 2014 protest. So I chose this specifically because it is um, not the easiest thing to, to work with, this kind of uh, data, Twitter data. It's messy. There's all sorts of weird characters all sorts of weird words. And so I'm trying to uh, basically give you an example of the ways in which topic models can go wrong and how to deal with them. So we're not going to be seeing the prettiest results today. But uh, I think this is a more realistic illustration of the kinds of things you like to encounter. If you do this yourself, oh my god. What is the... Just copy and paste. I tried. That should, that should work. Yeah. Uh, I apologize. I my Mac skills are fairly poor. Yeah, that should be. Great. 
So the three packages we're going to be using right now are Quantita, which is a package that Ken Benoit has developed for managing textual data. Um, I highly recommend it. Uh, then there is Topic Models, which is the, my preferred R package for running LDA. And finally, ggplot, which is a plotting package that makes all the pretty graphs. So what we're going to first do is read in the documents. So in this case, we have 162 documents. So you see each of these is 162 uh, long. And these correspond to a day's worth of tweets by a coalition of Venezuelan elites. So these are Venezuelan senators, in fact. So we have 162 days, roughly five months of data from um, elites from the two different coalitions. And I'm going to go through and combine them, uh, read in the data itself, and make it a large character vector. Um, well, so before that, that was just the names of the, the paths of the files. Read lines just reads in um, every line of text from. So I, I store the, and most I think the best way to do it is to just store the data in text files. So each document is stored as a separate text file. And um, you just read in the text to R. If you have a lot of data, you probably want to use some kind of uh, database. So I've used a little bit of the SQL through R, and it's not too hard to use. But there's not enough now that's necessary. So I'm going to use the uh, tokenize function in Quantita. What this does is take the inputted text. Um, we're going to remove the punctuation, but not remove. So there's a specific function for analyzing Twitter data. In this case, we're going to not remove the Twitter, so not remove hashtags, and not remove the at symbol. So it could be used for um, mixed language, like your Twitter. So in your uh, tweet data, there are both. Sp so in, in a tweet, in a tweet, there is both Spanish and also English words, and can deal with it. it okay. um, I don't know. I mean, so actually, no you should not do this on multiple languages. However, there is an awesome paper that's coming out in political analysis that Chris Lucas, um, the PhD student at Harvard, uh, wrote. And he actually does integrate a translation service into um, topic models. And it's very cool. So check that out if you're interested. I think he even has Chinese, which I know is what you actually care about. <laughs> so um, We're going to lowercase the text, just so that we don't think that capital and lowercase words mean anything different. Now we're actually going to turn it into this document feature matrix. So um, the function is DFM. We're going to say stem equals true, language equals Spanish. That tells it what language to do the stemming in. Um, and the ignored features are the stop words that we have, the Spanish list of stop words. Um, and it turns out that this, this stop word list is relatively conservative. Um, the second function we look at today is going to have a more advanced uh, stop word list. So it's running. Just take a second. We're going to set k equal to 50. I'm going to talk about why I chose that. I'll show you some graphs in a bit, and I'm going to talk about the process of choosing k. But for now, we're just going to say k equals 50 and set the seed so we can redo it. And finally, we're actually going to run the function that says we want to do LDA. So the, we're doing the Gibbs sampling method. I, most, most people do that instead of the variational method. It's faster. And um, these functions back here tell you basically specifically how you want the algorithm to run. So you have some burn-in period, 